Jury deliberations are expected to begin today in the trial of three ex-Memphis police officers charged in the fatal beating of Tyree Nichols. During closing arguments, prosecutors said officers laughed and bragged about the beating, while defense attorneys argue the force used against Nichols was not excessive and did not violate Memphis police policies. Now jurors are set to receive instructions from the judge before they deliberate. ABC News legal contributor, trial attorney Brian Buckmeyer joins me now for more on this. Brian, what can we expect to happen in court today and how crucial are these instructions the judge is about to give the jury? So closing arguments are done for everyone, defense and prosecution. The judge is expected to give instructions to the jury as to how they're going to handle this case. And in terms of how important those instructions are, they're everything. The way I often analogize them too is it's it's like a card game, right? And the rules of a card game often define how a person wins. The rules can be very different for poker, solitary or spades. And so those rules and how either side uses them best can often determine the outcome of a trial. Now, Brian, during closing arguments, the prosecution painted this picture of officers who not only used excessive force, but then failed to render aid and then tried to cover up what they had done at the expense of Nichols receiving medical care, proper medical care. How strong did you find closing arguments were overall, and how crucial is each of those pieces in the argument? It, first of all, extremely powerful from the prosecution. They have a very good case in front of them. A lot of it recorded on video and some of it even in the, the alleged lies of the defendants in this case. Now, each one of those points are important because they all flow into a different charge that is being committed against these officers, whether it's excessive force, failure to render aid, or obstruction of justice. But that last one, especially when you think about the concept of trying to cover up your actions, that's considered to be what's called consciousness of guilt. That you only do that because you know the other things you're trying to cover up were bad. And that's very powerful for the prosecution. What about the defense argument? The defense argument is trying to kind of piecemeal what was and what wasn't illegal, what fit into the proper guidelines. When you look at some defendants like Haley, uh, one of the defendants of the th one of the three defendants who's making the argument of they only showed up later on, they weren't there for the majority of the injuries, and he's the one that actually called uh, the medical services 24 seconds after he was handcuffed. Some decent arguments, but I don't think they're going to be enough to create reasonable doubt. We, something unique in this case, saw two other officers plead guilty and testify against these three. One of them cried on the stand saying he wished he had stopped the punches. Another confessed to beating a helpless, in his words, Tyree Nichols. How much do you think their testimony is going to play in here? I think it's going to be at the heart of the case for actually both the defense and the prosecution. For the defense, they're going to point the finger and say, hey, you've already kind of, quote unquote, got your pound of flesh. The people who are pleading guilty, they did the wrong act. They used excessive force. Their kicks and punches are what actually caused Tyree Nichols' death. And they're going to try to hide behind that and say, these actions didn't cause the death or the injury, and you should let them go. But for the prosecution, they're going to say, hey, in for a penny, in for a pound. All of you are together in this. You're all guilty. All right. ABC News legal contributor Brian Buckmeyer, thank you.